we're in the middle of an industrial warehouse space. You know, there's no glitz glam, there's no neon signs, there's no huge, beautiful, you know, see-through walls. It's a production facility. It's very, very, very lucky. Very right. lucky. Right, right. But the products, the products are good. The products are good. <laughs> yeah. He is one of the foremost world experts on beverages, on alcohol, and also just flavors and palates. We have five liqueurs and then lately I uh, branched out and made a vodka that is uh, called Fet. And it's got gold in there, so I mean, it, uh, you know, it, uh, it floats and it looks nice. And it matches. I wore and this to match. <laughs> yeah, it, that's perfect, that's perfect. Look at it. <laughs> That's pretty spot on. That's impressive. It, it, it works like a charm. It's amazing. It's amazing. There is my own take on chartreuse green that is called there. That won a double gold the San Francisco Spirit Competition. Double gold. Yeah. And people need to know, as a bartender, that's the competition. There's no other competition that you pay attention to. I mean, if you win gold there, that's the Oscars of alcohol. The same happened with Fernet, actually. This year. This year, Fernet got it. Three drops. Yeah, these are very concentrated. So we're watching a live version of the cure making, the flavor making. chilling system is basically an air conditioning unit. Put this thing into the drum where I make it. I chill it before filtering. This is basically a very uh, rudimental but very efficient filtering system. Charcoal, copper, lava. Yeah, lava yeah. So you made this, so you, you made all these little things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is fun, like steampunky. Isn't it just like so like... I didn't expect this. Yeah. You made so many of your own contraptions. So yeah. where, is, where did that come from? When I came here, I started building my own uh, remote control airplanes from scratch and uh, and I loved it, you know, so I, I really like uh, making things. It's inspiring you know, to see someone that just says, well, what if I just did it myself? All the way. And you're doing more production by being more efficient, yeah. not by just expanding, expanding, expanding. <laughs> Till this day, I will tell them, I will show them a picture of you. <laughs> they do not believe that it comes from 1050 Bethel. <laughs> and that's why I love it. So it's crazy that in Eugene, Oregon, we were so spoiled to have your products for the last decade. Thank you. You know, people come into town, I'm always pouring them your things. People are always tripping out, like, this is in Eugene? Water, where the water from Eugene comes from, the Mackenzie River, that is one of the cleanest streams in the country filters to a thousand meter lava rock. Mm -hmm. So that way it comes out is perfectly pristine and beautiful. And that's why in this area there are great breweries like uh, in Asia and so on, because the water in their case is really the majority of the, of the product. And in my case it's not so apparent in the liqueur because the, there are lots of other things. But in the vodka you really see, you really feel. I mean it's not just about, oh, the water you drink in the glass. Our ice is being made from higher quality water. I mean these are all factors. These are these microscopic things that we get to, to enjoy. How did you feel being so embraced by cocktail culture? I, mean, I love it. You guys, I mean, the bartenders and people who really are into the cocktails but also into, into the knowing of spirits and liqueurs gave me a great inspiration. There is an enthusiasm here that I don't think is present anywhere else. So now, will you go with me to chase the cocktail? I will. <laughs> I read. Don't twist my arm. Come twist on. <laughs> Straight from across town took us what? Maybe seven minutes. <laughs> Absolutely wonderful spot. Bar Perlu. French sort of bistro with an awesome cocktail program. We've been talking about alcohol for like what, two hours now? Yeah. 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 So it's time to drink some alcohol. <laughs> it's time to drink.
Cheers, Thor. Cheers, my friend. <laughs> It's always exciting, you know, because it's. Uh, I love making them when I see them in the hand of someone that paid to actually have it and make something creative and nice. That's a great satisfaction. I mean, that's my. That made my day. It's smooth. It's clean. It's pretty. It tastes like to me. Some of the best drinks taste like you're drinking like waterfall, like straight from a waterfall. Because a drink like this, it showcases liquor, tiny little bit of vermouth, ice, you know, Mackenzie River water. And then, I mean, come on, made by Joe, one of Eugene's amazing cocktail legends, one of my heroes uh, and mentors when I was coming up. And he always made drinks that look much prettier than mine. Not too over the top. You don't want to make them too over the top, right? You don't want to make them too too fancy so that you're afraid to drink them. No umbrellas. Yes. Exactly. No umbrellas. No umbrellas. There's a but fine art. Great, There's yeah. a fine art to, to making it look pretty but not too pretty. Yeah. yeah. Joe is one of the most studious bartenders you will ever meet. He will tell you when a cocktail was invented, who invented it. So here's a little story about why I knew that. So early, early on in my career, I'll leave this up. This is kind of the linchpin of how, why this drink works. More and I went up to Portland, we went to this bar, they're having their drinks, and I kept looking at one of them, and I was like, what is, what is this? So I finally ordered it, and you're like, this is nice. I don't quite get it, but this is legit. So I go back to Maisie, and I'm coming up with the fall menu, and I'm like, I'm gonna do a play on that drink. Lo and behold, that concept, that drink, has existed for over 100 years. They didn't do anything original, I'm not doing anything original. So I may as well just try to learn what's out there. That's where the books come in, that's where the research comes in. Like, that's what I tell people all the time, like younger bartenders, you will never reinvent the wheel. Yeah, and all I saw... All you can do is understand how the wheel moves. Yeah. You didn't have to start from the beginning and create something brand new. Right. Like, you, know? you didn't stress yourself out about it. Yeah. yeah. Like, oh... What is there in that is uh, sort of smoky? Is mezcal or what? No mezcal. Tequila. Tequila? It's good. Amazing. Sea syrup. Oh. I don't have cute, cool labels, so I don't know how that works. Yeah. Perlou's got this absolutely beautiful little outdoor area. Got the flowers, got the vibes. We have so many businesses that I would say are intertwined. You don't get to do what you do without all the other businesses no. that do what they do. No. Community, not competition. Without other restaurants that do what we do, we can't create the community of the people who live here that are into it. We go to Newman's every day, right across the street. Oh. Um, yeah, when she says across the street, that was literally across the street. <laughs> our investors are also owners in Beerstein, so we collaborate all the time and help each other out. I think the farm to table movement is making a huge comeback. I think it was sort of forgotten and lost for a little minute, but with the pandemic and supply chain issues, we're realizing how important it is to stay local and mitigate climate crisis and mitigate carbon emissions by staying local. It might be a little bit more expensive now, but if you think about the long-term externalities, it's way less expensive <laughs> and way more needed and better. It tastes better, it's more fun, it's more local. Eugene is like gritty in a good way still, kind of like old school Portland and old school San Francisco. There's a grit to it. It's, there's still like a working class thread, which I love, but there's also like the whole West Coast is really seeing the struggles of capitalism, too, with the income inequality. And it's happening, there's a lot of gentrification happening here, too. Well, it feels like we're at the point where if we don't open businesses, yeah. we won't be able to in five years. Yeah. You know, and it feels like this is the point where it's important that you two are doing what you do, you are doing what you do, you know, and we're trying to just sort of shed a light on, we can change the narrative and help Eugene as it grows yeah. you know we don't want to be ran over and this is a time for us to sort of put our narrative out there about this is what's actually important about living in Eugene it's and small it's business exactly yeah. exactly it's about everything you just said what you just said is what needs to keep happening in Eugene and it's up to us to make sure that that's how it grows I'm Laura Hines. I own Bar Perlou. This is Joseph Kiefer, and he owns Bar Perlou. 
and I am Andrea Loreto and I founded Elixir Craft Spirit in Eugene and make wonderful booze. I am Thor Slaughter, bartender at Akira and host of this delightful show you're watching, Eugene Icons Crawling. Shall I count? Yeah, in Italian. Uno, due, tre. And, and you've been, been crawling! crawling. What is up my friends? So, so, so stoked that you checked out our second episode of Crawling. Cannot wait for you to see what we got in store. We got lots more coming. But in the meantime, let me know. Where should we go? Where did we miss? What do you want to see happen? Let us know in the comments. Subscribe, Eugene Icons doing big things. So please let us know. Start the conversation in the comments. Did I get it wrong? Did we go to the worst places? Did we go to the best places? What are we missing out on? Let us know.